This is the Mustang Dark Horse, the most powerful non-Shelby Mustang ever created. It's got a five liter naturally aspirated V8 making 500 horsepower and 418 pound feet of torque. The result, zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds and the quarter mile in 12.5. Now it comes standard with a Tremec six speed manual transmission. A brilliant transmission from the Shelby GT350, the Mach 1, a massive improvement from the MT86 that you get in the standard Mustang. Now, you can of course get a 10 speed automatic transmission, but let's be real, in the dark horse, the correct option is the manual. The linkage is fantastic. The throws are awesome, nice and short. You can get a 3D printed titanium shift knob. It just makes the experience so much more lively. So what is the Mustang Dark Horse? Well, we've got the new seventh generation Mustang that started in 2024. And right now it's the most expensive, highest performance, highest horsepower Mustang that you can get up until we get the 2025 or 2026 Shelby GT500 that is rumored. So this is the baddest Mustang money can buy right now. And it is actually unbelievably impressive. The acceleration is brutal. It sounds insane. And the level of handling, the grip you get, is truly, truly staggering. On the outside, the seventh generation Mustang is a sharper, more aggressive evolution of the sixth gen. It's not radically different by any means, but it looks more expensive. I really like the way it looks. And then the Dark Horse takes things up a notch. So compared to the GT, we have magnetic dampers, we have stiffer springs, we have Brembo brakes that measure 15.5 inches in the front, better aero. Then if you wanna take things up a notch, you can get the handling package for $5,000. Here's where things get crazy. You get stiffer springs yet again, but you also get Trofeo RS tires something that came standard on a McLaren P1 or hypercars and supercars. Not something that you'd expect on a Mustang and they're absolutely enormous tires. They measure 305s in the front and 315s in the rear. You also get a more aggressive front splitter and a larger wing in the back and the combination results in so much lateral grip. It's actually unbelievable. The cornering capability of this Mustang <laughs> is pretty darn staggering. But the revolutionary changes are in the interior. So before we get into what this thing is truly like to drive and all the handling characteristics, let's pull over and go over how ridiculous this new interior is. The interior is radically different from previous generation Mustangs. I mean, look at this enormous digital display. We first saw something like this with the 2016 Mercedes S-Class, then BMW adopted it, and now we have this massive curved screen in a Mustang. Personally, I love it. It modernizes the interior, but I understand that it is a big change from previous generations. The graphics are fantastic, and there are some really cool Easter eggs hidden in here, which we'll talk about in a bit. The optional Recaro buckets hold you in place really well. They're also comfortable as well. I'm not a huge fan of the fake carbon fiber weave if you look really closely, and there are still some plasticky bits like on the steering wheel and the buttons over here, but overall, it's a large improvement. Now, the steering wheel fits great in your hands. It is a very large steering wheel, but it's got a mode selector right here where you can change between the various driving modes. Now, if you click the pony button in the center stack right here, it'll pull up a really cool part of the infotainment display where you can actually change the instrument cluster theme. So you can set it to change based on what driving mode you're in. I love track mode. It looks like something straight out of a Ford GT or a race car. It's very, very aggressive. But check this out. There's also a calm mode, which is a very simplified display. It's practically nothing at all on the screen. But the coolest part is you've got a retro display. You can choose Fox Body Mustang from 87 to 93, and it'll give you a digitized version of the Fox Body display from that era. I think that is really, really cool. Now, some other brilliant features of the vehicle's interior, this e-brake right here. It looks like a standard handbrake, right? But it's actually not, it's electronic. To deactivate it, you just push it down. To activate it, you pull it up. But because it's electronic, Ford is able to modulate how much the caliper is biting for the parking brake, control the traction control, and actually assist you in drifting. So if we go into the widget right here, track apps, you'll notice you can click drift brake. And now 
It'll turn traction control off and help you drift. There's also a launch control button. Yes, you can use a launch control with a manual transmission. You can set the launch control RPM. There's also an acceleration timer, brake performance, a lap timer, etc. The interior is pretty unbelievable. Now, there's some hidden Easter eggs throughout the car as well. Right here, Mustang Dark Horse badge there that tells us this is number five, the fifth Dark Horse. Now, on the rear window, you've also got little etchings of every single generation of Mustang, which I think is pretty cool. All right. Let's see what this thing is like to actually drive. Now, a quick note about the tires. This is a safety thing. When I originally got this Mustang delivered, I didn't check to see that it had the handling package right away. And I hopped in it and started accelerating and the thing fishtailed so intensely. It really caught me off guard. Something I think is missing from the instrument cluster is a tire temperature gauge. It's really nice in a lot of modern supercars and hypercars. They actually tell you whether the tires are warm enough to do full throttle accelerations and drive it on the track. It either tells you the exact temperature or it illuminates in green, yellow, or red, or blue to tell you if they're cold or warm. I think that would be really helpful because if you do accelerate before these are cold, you are going to spin like a top. But once they're warm, 305s in the front, 315s in the rear, the level of grip you get is really impressive. And it's a very welcomed thing for a track focused car. I was not expecting to have this level of tire in a Mustang and I'm very, very happy about it. It corners extraordinarily flat. The Brembo brakes work very well. You know, with the Challenger going away, with the Camaro going away, this is kind of a last hurrah of this type of car. It sounds brilliant. It looks really nice on the outside. I genuinely really like the way the seventh generation Mustang looks. I think it's the most premium gen that they've ever made. And the interior is crazy too. And like modern Mustangs, it handles really good. It's essentially kind of a continuation of the Mach 1. I tested that about a year ago and I loved that car. Same transmission, basically the same engine. We've got upgraded crankshafts, we've got forged connecting rods, we've got a dual throttle body intake, and some different tuning. Borrowed some stuff from the GT500 to have more power. Stiffer and larger anti-roll bars, but it's pretty much just a evolution of the Mach 1. Took all the best parts of that, improved the interior, improved the look on the outside a bit, added a bit more horsepower, and the result is something really, really awesome. I mean, it's not the smallest car in the world. At 3,900 pounds, it's a little bit big, but it's surprisingly nimble on these tight, twisty roads where I thought it was gonna struggle. That's why I brought it out here. But I am really, really impressed. Visibility is fantastic. I will say it doesn't have the best steering feel in the world. It's relatively disconnected from the road, but you just have to trust that this thing has all the grip in the world and puts the power down to the ground and will get you around the corners really, really well. Damn. And I know by today's standards, 500 horsepower doesn't sound like a ton. This thing is genuinely fast. I think it sounds phenomenal as well especially in a world where everything's a freaking six cylinder, a four cylinder nowadays. Everything's forced induction. It's that pure American V8 power and a manual transmission. You can't forget, that's getting rarer and rarer. And so to have a naturally aspirated V8 and a manual transmission, it's just an awesome thing. Another thing that I think is really cool about this car is it has four different exhaust levels. Actually, I'm gonna talk about that in a second because I've got way too good of a straightaway right here. All right, let's try launch control in the manual Mustang. So if we go ahead, track apps, launch settings, 3000 RPM, let's lower that a little bit. Let's do 2500, launch control is enabled. Should be able to floor the clutch and the accelerator, have it stand still, and then I'll slowly release the clutch and uh, accelerate, let's see. Little bog there. <laughs> All right, we gotta try that one more time. It 
it's got no lift shift, which is <laughs> hard to do. I've never owned a car that has no lift shift, so it just feels kind of weird to do. But man, that is a cool feature. We got another Mustang coming up ahead. So let's talk about it, different exhaust modes, which I think is awesome. Independent of what driving mode you're in, you can choose four different exhaust modes from quiet, normal, sport, and track. Everything but quiet is extremely loud and track is ridiculous. But I love the fact that you could drive this thing in track mode, let's go back, and put the exhaust into quiet mode. So if you don't wanna make a ruckus, but you still wanna drive the vehicle fast, it's a lot quieter right now in quiet mode. I mean, it's still relatively loud. It's not insanely quiet, but it's definitely going to annoy your neighbors less. And the really cool part about quiet mode is you can actually set a time frame that it activates. So let's say you go to work every day between seven and 8 a.m. and you don't wanna annoy your neighbors and you don't wanna have to put the exhaust into quiet mode every single morning. Well, you can actually set it up so that between seven and 8 a.m. it's always in quiet mode and then after 8 a.m. it's in track mode. I think that is a pretty darn cool feature. Overall, I think the Dark Horse is a fantastic Mustang. I think you could use a little bit more feedback in the steering. And I wish maybe there was more leather instead of this faux carbon fiber weave. But other than that, all of the interior improvements are happily welcome. This freaking capabilities of this for the money is pretty ridiculous. It starts at 59 grand. The premium one will start at about 63,000. Obviously options climb from there, but you're getting a pretty ridiculous car for the money. Seriously. <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. No!